quality of two population units. In the last topic, we have seen the t-test for single population. Okay, so now this is similar to the large sample test number two, but only difference there was sample size was thirty. Okay, in large sample. Now this is the this is the exact test or small sample. Okay, or small sample test. Okay, so here sample size is always going to be thirty. Okay, so this is the part of small sample test. So now let's go into uh, study this test and then solve numerical based on this. Okay, so I also give you the introduction of the distribution. Okay, so the distribution. T distribution is also called as the student's T distribution. Okay, and it makes the assumption that it has mean, and we don't know the standard deviation. So standard deviation is unknown, while mean is known. So in protein statistic, the normal distribution is bell shaped, uh, symmetric, and has mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma. So T distribution is similar to normal distribution, but it's less better. Means this is your normal distribution, normal distribution. Then uh, T distribution is less better, and it is uh, shorter than the normal distribution. Okay. Now uh, these are the applications. We have seen this in the previous lecture. Now we are here, and the T test will be done in the next. So these are the applications in a statistical test based on the t distribution. Our objective in this test is our objective in this test is to test the equality of two population means. Okay, then solve the numerical examples and practice it. So we'll go through it. Now in the test statistic, uh, not in the t test person. Uh, the t test for equality of the population means this is the second t test so so in the t test for equality of two population means we test uh, mu1 is equal to mu2 against any one of the alternatives Either mu one is not equals to mu two, or mu one is greater than mu two, or mu one is less than mu two. Okay, so so what is mu one? It is the population mean. It is the first population. Okay. What is it called? First, first population mean. And what is mu two? Second population. Okay. Population mean. Okay. So there will be either mu one, any one of the alternate hypotheses. And what is the test statistic? Uh, the formula for this. So this is x1 bar minus x2 bar upon square root of uh, this sample. This is what? This is sample mean square. Okay. This is the smallest. You have to write smallest sample mean square into one upon n1 plus one upon n2. This follows the normal distribution. And what is this sample mean square? Okay. And how this n1 plus n2 minus two? Uh, so since we are two samples, okay, one and two, so there are n one observations and here n two observation, right? So we uh, subtract one observation from each, okay? So n one minus one and here n two minus one, okay? So when we add this, when we add this two, we get n one minus one plus n two minus one, okay? So for calculating the sample mean square, we have to subtract one observation from each set. So n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1. So if we solve it, we'll see that n1 plus n2 minus 2. 
Okay, so don't get confusion there. And one plus and two means now there are two sets, so two observations are subtracted. If there are three, three observations, then the um, will be subtracted from this. Okay? So this is also called as the degrees of freedom. This is also called as the degree of freedom. Okay, so now this is the test statistic. Uh, this also follows the normal standard normal distribution, and this formula we have to remember. This is the formula which we have to keep in mind. So we saw numerical example based on this. So let's move on. So what is important here? Now population standard deviations, this is sigma one square and sigma two square are unknown. These are the population variances. These are unknown in this t distribution or t test. Okay. So we take the estimate of it. So population variance, what is the uh, estimate of uh, Population mean first population. Uh, sorry, what is the estimate of first population variance? First sample variance, okay, S1 square. And what is the estimate of sigma 2? This is sample uh, capital S2 square. So this is these are the estimates. What are these called? These are estimates of variances, population variances, which are unknown, which are unknown. Okay. So now in the formula, there is what, what is the formula? What is the formula? X1 bar minus X2 bar upon sample mean square into one upon N1 plus one upon N2. This follows normal distribution, standard normal distribution. So this one, this is called as the combined, or this is called as the combined sample mean square. Okay, because we assume that we assume here sigma one square means both the population variance are unknown and we assume that those are equal sigma one square is equals to sigma two square is equals to this one okay so we assume that both the population variances which are unknown are equal okay so that you have to understand there are two assumptions first the unknown population variances are equal and let it be sigma square. And then secondly, it follows the normal distribution. Okay, so this you have to take care of. And these are equal, considered equal. That's why we find the combined sample mean square. Okay, and what is the formula for that? It is summation x1i minus x1 bar per square plus x2i minus x2 bar whole square upon n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, so now let's see the study in detail. Or if you want it in terms of sample variance, then it will be n1 s1 square plus n2 s2 square upon n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay. So this this you have to use. Let me tell you when to use where, uh, which formula. So this formula is used, which I have uh, arrowed. This formula is used when you are given the raw data. There is one more simplified form, but I will not give it right now. Then this formula is when when you are given sample variances or sample standard deviation and you have to convert it into sample means okay so that time you can do this now let's solve this let's understand it, uh, this with the help of examples i add one slide over here because we will be needing that okay so now see the data uh, raw data is given with us right so there will be some calculations there we have to understand it. Okay. <clears throat> Am I audible? No. Uh, 
the data is regarding the following data gives the iq of students is the iq of students from two different schools a and b of the same age group okay so here are the iqs of students are given test whether the two schools from which the two samples were selected have equal mean. means they have equal iq means students of same age group and same class of different school are the same iq okay that you have to check that same iq okay you have to test it this way okay so let's define the term so what is new one it is the iq of students all students okay iq of students from school a means who, whatever number of students there so this is a conclusion now what are the two populations here which are the two populations here here the populations are school a and school b okay so understand so q1 means what population mean population mean of uh, population mean iq uh, iq of students so these are these two populations school a school b so iq of students so iq of students from school a okay and what is mu2 is iq of students from school b okay now what you have to test here what you have to test what is the h not h not is always say that both are equal okay so mu1 is equals to mu2 okay so what does it says iq okay of students from both school are equal i will write in short same iq of schools of uh, students of both schools same iq or I, whether I may, it will be better if i write a proper line <laughs> so so mu1 is equal to mu2 means iq of students from both schools are equal or have equal means have let write it is better to write in terms of the question asked equal means okay and what will be against it against it now we cannot say which one is having less or which one is having greater in that state of confusion or unclarity we we'll write not equal to that is two sided test okay so how we write this iq of students from both the schools have not equal do not have equal mean okay so this is the Now we mentioned the formula with the okay. So here now we have to do some calculations also. Okay. So second part of this is uh, we have to prepare a table. Okay. So we have to prepare a table. Now let's now there are two kinds of these are the samples. Okay. So this is a sample from school A. Miss sample of students selected in school A, and this is a sample of students selected at school A. Okay, so we'll write down the values. So I have prepared Excel. I have mentioned all these values here. So this is the data you can check. So this is the data. This data I have arranged in this form. Okay. Okay. So this is the data. Which we had. Okay, so I want to get the totals. Okay, so before that, I need to put the formula. Let me tell you the formula for this. What formula we are we using here? So 
I must mention the test statistic under we are assuming that uh, both the schools are equalized. Okay, that what means what is the minimum of under -age? That is the minimum of under -age. So calculated value is equals to x1 bar minus x2 bar upon sample mean square 1 upon n1 plus 1 upon n2. This follows the normal distribution. Standard on distribution. Now we have to obtain this value. Okay. So how we are going to obtain? Now I write the simplified formula. Okay. So this is summation x i square minus n1 <coughs> x bar square plus this is summation y i square minus n2 because not necessarily uh, samples are saved in both the School. Okay, number of students made very so y bar square upon n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, so I will come to this later on. Okay, because now we have to uh, find out all these totals. Okay, uh, x bar, y bar, then what is the summation x square, some of the squares I have to obtain. So I come back to the Excel. So now this here. This is x square. This is y square. Okay. I get all the four totals. I can easily get these totals from the Excel. So square of this. So x into x so this is x square and it's very easy calculation when you use excel so it is y square y into y okay so now i drag it so rest of the calculation automatically generated so these are the these are the values okay Okay, so these are the values. Okay, now I want the totals. Okay, so simply auto sum. I do the auto sum. So these are the totals, right? I highlight it. So these are the totals which we want. Okay, so here, what is this? This is summation xi. This is summation y i. This is summation x i square, and this is summation y square. Okay. So now, what I want, I want the value of sample mean square. What is the formula? The formula is summation x square minus n one x bar square plus summation y square minus n2 y bar square so n1 minus one and also write like this okay i have written n1 plus n2 minus four so you can also write this okay so this is the formula okay so now one more thing we want it it is x bar and y bar so let's do this let's find out this so how do you get it so summation is fine so what is the number of observations here two four six eight so how many students are there let's check it once let's check the values ones okay uh, from both the schools uh, eight students are selected so two four six eight so this time a number of students from both the schools are equal but uh, this may not be every time sample size may be different okay so this is just a pure coincidence that sample size is equal here okay so total summation x divided by 8 this is the average iq of students from school a 
okay and what about this 819 divided by 8 so this will be the average iq of students from school b so that is higher okay so i got the both the means now i put it in the formula okay so i saw it so we have all the totals all the means so let's do the calculation right so summation x square is well, how much it is 75 how much that 76546 76546 minus n1 is 8 now n1 n2 is equal to 8 okay sample size is both uh, same for both the into x bar is 97 97.5 square okay plus summation y square summation y square is 84,379 minus 8 into y bar means average IQ of students from school B 375 square okay and here n1 now 8 minus 1 plus again from school B there are 8 samples so one and same thing so now I solve the operator okay and just do it on the calculator. You can also use Excel for that, but I use the calculator. So 76,546 minus 8 into 97.5 square. So if you solve this, you will get 496. This is the first term. Okay. Then secondly, second term is 84,379 minus a into 102.375 whole square so it will be second term value will be 533.875 okay upon what is the denominator 8 minus 1 7 plus 8 minus 1 7 means 7 7 14 okay so if i do add all these things 496 the total will be 1029.875 upon 40. So this will give me the sample mean square. Okay, so divided by 14, I will get it is 73.5625. This is the sample mean square, but I want the sample mean square root. Okay, want the sample root mean square. So it is square root of it. Take square root of that. It will be 8.5768. So this is the value. So what is the uh, takeaways from this? So you have to note it down. So what we wanted, just take those values. So we want we needed h bar. H bar is 97.5 y bar is 102.375 and sample square okay sample mean square is 73.5625 or sample mean sample mean square root is 8.5725 okay keep mind we we'll come back to the our mean case okay so here we have find out these values Okay, so I write note down once again. So this value after calculation, we got it as 73.5625. Whereas X bar was found out to be 96.5. Y bar was found out as how much is 1 mark 2.37. Okay. So to use the formula okay so let's one okay. using one i will get the calculate uh, value so put the values here 
uh, okay i have used the term x1 bar x2 bar so don't get confused in that i can also change that one instead of x1 x2 i can use x y okay so don't worry about that so this is with the calculation it is 97.5 minus 102.375 upon what is the sample mean square this is this is what 73.5625 into 1 upon what is the sample size so both the sample sizes were same so 1 upon 8 1 upon 8 okay so now let's do the calculation what will be the numerator i write the numerator over here it is 97.5 minus 102.375 so numerator will be 4.8 Seven five. Okay, upon I write this term. Okay, so one by eight. That's one by eight into seventy three point five six two five. So square root of that. So when you solve this, you get the term 4.2884 okay 4.2884 so now get the calculated value of p p statistic okay which is uh, minus 4.875 divided by 4.2884 so that value comes up to be minus 1.1367 okay so this is the this is the calculated value. Okay, this is the calculated value. Now you want the table value, right? So let's call it two. This is calculated value. And how you get the table value? You need two things. Now you are applying the next step. Now table value. Table value. Uh, we call it as P, which is the freedom, and uh, we require two things this is the freedom and alpha percent level of significance. Okay, so here what we assume the degrees of alpha if alpha is given, then we mention it. Alpha is not mentioned, so by default, we will check. So let's do it on the next page. Okay, I just note down this value of T calculation. Okay. What we get from the previous slide, so calculated value of P is minus 1.1367. Okay, now, now let I want the table value, right? Uh, sorry, uh, critical value or critical value or table value. Okay, so table value. So this is written as degrees of freedom, alpha percent level of significance. So in this case, what is the degrees of freedom here? It is n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1. So 8 minus 1 plus 8 minus 1. Because both the observation sample out the number of samples is the same. So it is 14 here. So here it is 14 degrees of freedom and alpha. So let alpha by default value, default value is 5%. So 0 0.05. So it is 0 0.05 means 5%. Okay. So how to take this value? So I have taken for you so this. Now the alpha value. I I just zoom out this. This is the P table. Table of the distribution. How you get this? Now see uh, check here. This is 14. And you have to go. Till you, and, and now this is the degrees of freedom. Very first column is degrees of freedom. This is degrees of freedom. And here there is a level of significance, alpha. Okay. So this is it. Now just check the intersection of this intersection. Uh, 2.145, 2.145. This is 
2.14. What is that table value? It is 2.145. It is 2.145, right? So now you have to compare both the values. This is two, this is three. So what's happening here? Now the calculated value is less than the table value. Okay. So calculated value is less than the table value. Okay. So here we assume here we observe observe calculated value is less than table value. Okay. So in that case, what is the what we do? What is the decision to be taken? If calculated value is less than the table value. Then in that case, we uh, we accept H naught. We accept H naught. Remember, when calculated value is less than table value or critical value, accept H naught. So it means the final step. We arrive to the conclusion. So the conclusion is accept H naught. And what H naught says? What H naught says? See, IQ of students from both the schools have equal means okay so that is our conclusion okay so what is your conclusion iq of students from both the schools iq of students from both the schools have equal means have equal means at five percent level of significance okay remember do not forget to uh, uh, do not forget to write the level of significance because uh, it is accepted at h not it doesn't mean that it will be accepted at other level of significance uh, it may happen that it may reject it at other levels or one percent or ten percent it may rejected or maybe accepted so you it's it's a good practice to mention the level at which it is accepted or rejected okay because same will not be the case in a remaining uh, level of significance okay so in this way we have solved this example here we had given the raw data okay now we will see one example where uh, there will be the summary values means means will be given then uh, sample variances or standard deviations will be given okay so let's do that okay so look at this question look at this question the mean life of 10 electrical bulbs was found to be one four five six hours with the standard deviation of this a second sample of 17 bulbs now there are two populations and both the population the sample is taken okay from different batches showed a mean life of this okay so with standard deviation of three nine eight hours is there a significant difference between the mean life of the two batches of bulbs okay so you have to carefully read the question and let's define the term okay so now basically there are two populations okay suppose a and b okay you can assume that now what is x1 bar x1 bar is mean life of mean life of bulbs from sample one from first sample right and what is x2 bar mean life of bulbs from second sample right and what is s1 first sample standard deviation first sample standard because you have to understand you define this first okay you will get better uh, uh, clarity and a better understanding of the problem now what you are given standard deviation so capital s will be there okay remember and s2 is second sample standard deviation okay now what is n1 number of sample size number of samples drawn from first population and what is n2 which is 70. so you observe that in both the cases sample size is less than 30 okay that's why you are applying the t test okay if the sample size was 
If the sample size is greater than 30, then it will be the it will be the large sample test. Okay. If sample size is greater is uh, greater than 30, then we would have used the large sample test too. But now both the sample sizes are less than 30. So that's why we are using the T test. Okay. Remember this difference. Now what is the claim okay it's better to whenever possible whenever you are confusing you write on the claim there is a significant difference this is the, the claim here. there is a significant difference okay so there is a significant difference significant difference okay between the mean lines mean Life or life of two batches of bulbs. Two batches of bulbs. Okay, so this is the there is a significant difference. So uh, let's now we are ready to mention the test statistic. So in this case, H1 will say mu1 is equal to mu2. It is always okay equal to. Is the null so it will always say no. Now, what is mu1? It is the first population mean, and then mu2 is the second population. Okay, modable. Okay. So, this statement means there is no significant difference. There is no significant difference. There is no significant difference between mean lines. I don't write the entire statement. Mean life of bulbs. Okay. Against it, the statement will be mu1 not equals to mu2. Okay. Mu1 not equals to mu2. What does it mean? It will mean there is a significant difference. This is nothing but the claim. You can see that there is a significant difference. Okay, significant difference. Okay, you can write the interest rate then between the lives of two bulbs or batches of bulbs or batches of. Okay, so this statement you have to. So you have to always mention what you have to test. Okay, so that should not be ignored at all. Now we'll come to the data. Which, uh, which we have provided with. Okay, so you can take a screenshot. Okay, so take a screenshot because I'm changing the slide. Okay. So, what are the values you have to remember? So, just a minute, I'm taking a screenshot so that I can write the values. I don't want. Okay. So, so, now I summarize the data. What is given with us? What data is provided with us? Firstly, I have given the sample size. Now, as I said, it A and B. Okay, suppose these are the uh, bulbs from company A and B, right? So, suppose this is data from company. I call it the company A and company B for our understanding. So, now what is the sample size from uh, first sample? Company, this is 10. What are the second sample size? How many bulbs were drawn from second sample? 17. What was the mean life found? Okay, so x1 bar is 1, 4, 5, 6. And what is x2 bar? x2 bar mean life was 1, 2, 8, 0. Okay, I'm comparatively studying it now. Sample standard deviation. 
Okay, capital S1. Okay, my dear friend, remember this difference. Sample translation from first population was four to three hours. I, I'm not writing the, uh, you have to write the units. Okay, then what is the sample standard deviation from second? It was, it was 398 hours. So this was the data, okay? Alpha is not mentioned, so I take it 5% by default. Alpha is 5%, okay? So just say, just as a, as a by default, we have to take this 5%, if not mention, okay? Now I write the test statistic. Under H1. So, what is the formula? Calculated value of T. It is X1 bar minus X2 bar upon sample mean square. Note that this is not capital S, this is small s, the sample mean square. Okay? So, students usually get confused in that. Okay, this follows standard normal distribution. Well, now here it comes. I call it number one. Now here, sample mean square. Now I have a relation between this and one. What is the relation between sample mean square and sample standard deviation? So this is for two samples. So this is the relation x2 square upon n1 plus n2 minus 2. Already we have discussed about this. Okay, so put the values there. So what is n1? 10. Okay, 10 into what is s1? 423 square plus what is n2? So n2 is 17 into what is s2? Sample standard deviation. So 398 square okay. upon what is n1? 10 plus 17 minus 2. Okay, since there are two groups, two value will be subtracted. Okay, so finally, when I get this. So when I do the calculation, I write I get the final value over here. So I do the calculation for you. 10 into 10 into 4 to 3 square plus 17 into 398 square. Okay. So divided by now. 10 plus 17, 27, 27 minus 2, 25. So divided by 25. Okay. So what is this value comes? If you check it, do the calculation, you'll get it 1792.86.32. So this is a very big number. Okay. But that's it. We have to go with that. So therefore, from 1. So now we are calculating. Uh, calculated value. Okay, so once you got it, we have to move further. Okay, so we get the calculated value. Okay, so I insert a page here. Okay, I'll need it. Let us. Okay, so now, so write the values. Now, what is in the formula? The first x1 bar. So x1 bar is 1, 4, 5, 6 minus what is x2 bar? 1, 2, 8, 0. Okay. Square root of s square. Now we are already written 1, 7, 9, 2, 8, 6. Do the calculation very carefully. 1 upon n1 means 10 plus 1 upon n2. 1 upon n2. What is n2? 17 sample size, second sample size. Okay. So I write the directly, but you have to do this carefully. Okay. So now this is okay. I do this calculation directly for you. So one divided by ten plus one divided by seventeen. So the numerator comes this one. This so the numerator value 
taking square root it comes to 168.745 okay this is the denominator value sorry and now one four five six minus one two eight zero this difference is 176 okay so when you solve this you get the table calculated value okay what you get calculated value so let's solve this 176 divided by 168.745 the answer is 1.0429 so this is the calculated value okay let's call it so what was the calculated value you can find out so this was 1.0429 okay and i had called it now quickly we have to get the table value okay so how we get the table value or critical value okay what is the technical term? critical value so how to get this i need two things first degrees of freedom so what is that now very simple uh, sample size subtract one from each sample size and then add so n1 minus one plus n2 minus one so you easily get it 10 minus one plus 70 minus 1 so that is 25 so, so degrees of freedom of 25 okay so 25 and secondly we get uh we want a level of significance that is five percent if it is not mentioned then five percent by default already said okay so now using table you get the critical value right degrees of freedom this is a way to write the critical value. So this is T, 25 degrees of freedom and uh, 0 0.05 means 5 percent. This is uh, what is the table value? So let's check. So I have to zoom out. So you can see that at the bottom, see there is a 25. Also in the first row, uh, first column. Can see this here so last shaded value here it is the 0 0.05 5 percent level of significance first row 0 0.05 level of significance and first column you see 25 the intersection value is this one so this is the value 0 0.260 okay got it so it is 0, 0.0 what is that value let's check one more time it is 0 0.060 so it is 0. 0. 2.060 it is 2.060 so it is it is 2.060 this is the table value. okay so you compare calculated value on the table value okay so comparing we get what we observe calculated value is less than the critical value or the table value. okay so ultimately our decision is to accept h0 okay so what we do if calculated value is less than table value we accept h0 okay so now here we reach at the conclusion so what is the conclusion so let's check the hypothesis we have met so the hypothesis was what h0 says there is no significant difference between the mean lives of bulbs at five percent level of freedom. okay so that is the conclusion there is no significant you write the answers conclusions in the way it is asked the there is no significant difference there is no significant difference between mean lives of bulbs. Okay, so you can add further in line, but this is sufficient. So there is no significance. So this way we have solved both the kinds of problems on this. This is a very important test and easily asked me. So this is the example for practice. So take the screenshot of it. Okay. So 
take the screenshot of this. And now here we finish the second t test. Means t test for single uh, t test for a set of two population bits. Now in the next lecture we'll see the paired t test. Paired t test. Now this particular test is also called as the unpaired test. Here the samples are independent. This is also called as let me tell you. This test is also called as this is also called as the paired t test. Uh, sorry. This is also called as unpaired t test. Okay. And samples and samples are independent. Okay. Samples are independent. Please note this. Okay. So now next time we will see the paired t test. Uh, thank you very much for patience with listening. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.